Hey everyone, it's Ellis. This is Patch 14.8 Notes Rundown here on the FlyQuest YouTube channel. This one is perhaps going to be a little bit different because you might see parts of this rundown on other forms of social media, and that I think is going to be the first time that the patch rundown appears in other places, as I think FlyQuest is intending to put some of this out on shorts and TikTok and stuff like that. So let's just get into it. So it is a large patch in that there is many changes, and obviously 1419 is going to reshape the game a lot, and then season 15 is going to completely shape the game. So we've been told, apparently. All right, so uh, rank two split starts on September 24th, so make sure to hit your final rank, or, well, sorry, it ends on, well, yeah, it starts on, yeah, it ends on September 24th. Okay. Um, so, very nice, very nice, very nice. Um, so there will be a 12-hour gap between an ending and the new split starting, so it'll start at noon on the following day on 1419. Ready, check, go. We're bringing updated Q dodge and ready check penalties live to all uh, regions. Penalties begin when Q lockouts and will escalate to bans. Players will still be able to decline the occasional ready check without penalty, but are no longer able to serially decline as a way for aiming for specific opponents. Interesting. Okay. So, I've already experienced this actually a few times on uh, the Korea server. Allow me to show you what it looks like um, as this is already out. Uh, so, this is what it looks like. Um, it basically just, you know, like, notifies you. Now, this was really strange because this happened the second time in a day that I didn't accept a ready check. Um, so it doesn't seem like it goes away if you played a game, um, which is what the old penalties used to end up being like. Um, so there's that. Okay. Uh, league transfer restrictions, now they're gonna have a lockout. Clash issues have been happening in some regions on the weekend. Players impacted were not charged for Clash tickets and are working on uh, manually granting rewards based on the games the player won. We apologize for any inconveniences. Very cool. Champions, Ari, right, E damage increased. 80 to 260% AP to 80 to 240. So a flat 40 base and then 15% AP. Here's the thing about this. The, Ari doesn't get points into this until way later, and rank one is still the same. You're not going to put an extra skill point in it for the extra 10 damage, okay? Even though it goes up an extra 40 and it has that 15% AP ratio, you're just really being rewarded by the AP ratio for hitting your charm. It's a negligible amount of damage and laning phase, not doing anything. You hit it in the super early parts of the laning phase, and you're getting an extra 2 damage after resistances, 3 damage. It's not changing anything, guys. Aurora, our drum distance and wall forgiveness decreased duration is decreased. Our between worlds maximum jump distance is going to be down by 150. Wall jump forgiveness is going to go from 700 to 450. Duration 3 to 4 to 2 to 3. So a lot of her nimbleness is being hit. And remember, with Ari getting buffed, Ari... All right, so while, while Aurora is the rabbit, the fox eats the rabbit. And so Ari is the competitive version of Aurora unless Aurora's numbers are just completely out of whack because Aurora depends on her numbers being out of whack in order to justify her pick. Azir, W damage is decreased. Arise. 50 to 110 plus 0 to 77 based on level, 55% AP to 50 110 plus 0 to 45 based on level, plus 35 to 55% AP. So they're hitting everything and they're making it so that you need points in W now. It's just all around a really big hit to Azir in laning phase. Um, and then also even his late game damage. So, Quirky, Q damage decrease, R damage is decreased. Phosphorus Bomb is going to be down by a flat 20. And this is the ability that you put points into first. Now, the scalings are not changing at all. So, the real question is, is does this affect his wave clear? And I don't think that it does. I, I would find it really hard to believe that Quirky's wave clear is somehow altered and that he now needs an additional auto attack on minions in order to shove the wave. So, all in all, Quirky's fine. R damage, Mishla Barrage, 80 to 280, 80% bonus to 80 to 240, so losing a flat 40 plus 70% bonus, or 70% bonus, so losing 10% there. So, you really feel the effects of this, not necessarily on the first one, because again, Quirky in laning phase, when he's level 6, he typically has like a call, a D-blade, and like a tier, right? He doesn't really have a whole lot of bonus AD, you're not really feeling the effects there. But, you are probably starting to feel the effects around, you know, rank 2 and rank 3 on the ultimate, and he is losing damage in that regard. Nar base AD increased by 3, fake news. Um, now, Nar is a champion that does auto-attack you quite a lot in laning phase. He's probably gaining about an auto-attack worth of damage, is the way to look at it. Maybe two, uh, depending on what matchup it is and how much he's harassing you. So you can look at, like, two auto-attacks, which probably means that if you're laning against Nar, depending on the matchup, you have about 80 less CHP inside the lane. Um, or, like, yeah, may maybe. And that's assuming that Nar is, like, playing really well. 
Ivern, E shield strength and slow decreased. Ivern's actually much stronger than his solo Q win rate indicates. True. As players are typically not rushing redemption, which is his best item. And if you'd like to make up for these nerfs, please switch from Moonstone and enjoy continued success. Beyond that, Ivern currently risks to become the number one pro jungler for Worlds, so we need to trim his power to keep him from overgrowing the competition. Ivern has been the best jungler in the game for years, guys. Years. And pro players don't realize. Instead, we're misled into believing that the, uh, the other tree... The fake tree, Maokai, is uh, somehow better. But yeah, Trigger Seed, it's going to go down by uh, a flat 10. Uh, not the end of the world. Now, obviously, this does affect because Ivern goes up to, like, what, 40% increased shield? So it's not really just a flat 10. Uh, he is losing some value there. The slow percent fake news, Ivern's still god tier. Jarvan, passive damage increased. Parse of Mashal ca massive cadence. Uh, current health damage going up by 1%. So if your current HP is 1,000, okay... It's now dealing an extra 10. Huge! This is what was gating Jarvan. Um, now, obviously, like, in, in later stages of the game, this is a little bit more impactful, but it's, again, it's kind of fake. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Jarvan's ability to be pushed last year was a byproduct of itemization and runes and not his actual inherent stats. Jax, armor MR on hit damage and armor per champion hit increased big. Um, so he's getting a flat 10 armor uh, granted at rank 1. Um, and then he's getting a flat six. So really, really, really nice. It's almost like he gets an extra two mountain drakes, pretty much. On hit magic damage, uh, 60 to 160, 60% AP to 70 to 170, plus 60%, so getting an extra 10. Um, armor per additional champion hit, 15 to 25, plus 10% bonus CD to 30 to 30, or 20 to 30, sorry. Um, so very, very negligible here. 60% of the bonus is still gained as MR. That's very nice. So very nice changes for Jax, especially if he comes in as a counter pick and Cassante keeps appearing. Jace, Q slow increased, E bonus movement speed is increased, Q to the skies 30 to 55 percent to 35 to 60 percent e acceleration gate bonus movement speed 30 to 55 to 35 to 60 not the changes that necessarily is preventing jace from coming back into competitive um but it puts them on people's radar and that's all that matters jinx attack speed growth increase so here's the thing uh people might have been seeing that i'm doing the competitive world's uh you know annual 1418 uh tier list right and we're doing it with several pro players ad carry had uh zven crown shot or crowny uh unforgiven and others contributing and right now, Jinx was placed at A, but I'm just moving her up to S because this champion, especially when you get her with counterpick support, she's just broken. With Ivern being inside of the meta and so many other junglers, Jinx just slots with them so well. And she has the two different build variations depending on what the enemy team composition is, where she has like the pure armor pen variant. And then she has obviously the crit and hyperscaling depending on who she's playing with. And the attack speed growth just massively helps her. Leona, base armor decreased. Don't care. Lilia, uh, Lilia, passive monster damage cap increased. Our sleep duration is decreased. So they're really gutting her clear speed is what is going on here. Um, they're just massively gutting her, her clear speed. Um, so if you're bad at clearing on Lilia and you're already a little bit slow in mid game with making sure that you juggled the enemy or you juggled the monster camp's patience perfectly while kiting between camps to maintain her passive stacks and all this other stuff, you're going to get hurt a lot harder now. Um, Wilting Lullaby doesn't really matter. Lissandra Q damage is decreased. So 80 to 220, 85% AP to 80 to 220, uh, plus 75%, losing 10% AP. Now, this isn't a big deal because typically Lissandra, she goes in, she does, she blows her load all over you. Um, and, you know, you end up getting blue uh, as she tries to, like, suffocate you. Um, you know, she, like, she, she gets on top of you and she tries to suffocate you and uh, turn you blue. Um, and then sometimes, you know, like maybe she's not feeling it because you're trying to, you're trying to like suffocate her. And so maybe she actually turns blue. You know what I mean? Like maybe, maybe that's what's going on. So a little bit of rough housing there, no malignance, uh, no maliciousness intended, but yeah, you know, uh, very, very fine. Lulu passive picks damage is decreased. Passive picks fairy champion. Um, this is more of a buff for top lane Lulu, which some people are playing in solo queue. Support Lulu doesn't really do anything, but for top lane Lulu and for... Mid Lulu, I guess, really rare. It is actually noticeable. Malphite, passive shield increase. So the really cool thing about this is Malphite basically gets 1% maximum HP. So even in early laning phases, now typically you're going to get maybe 10 passive usages. Now his HP is going to go anywhere from like the 600. So he's going to go anywhere from six to probably nine on, on shield average in first recall phase, right? So you do the math, you add that all up. If you get like a good 10 you're gonna have like a hundred extra EHP off of this uh, passive, right? Hundred, hundred plus EHP, and that's gonna stay the same, um, you know, as you transition into mid game 
and and late game unless you're going tank malphite in which case uh in the later stages of the game you know i mean yeah it can probably hit upwards to like 200 maybe um but yeah Maokai, Q damage decrease, E cooldown increase, sapling duration and brushes decrease. Really just hits top lane Maokai and hits support Maokai more than anything else. This doesn't really affect jungle Maokai, which is why he's being picked. Uh, Misfortune, base AD is decreased by two. Just hurts her total damage dealt. Doesn't actually affect her wave clear. Gnosis, E damage is decreased. So Gnosis uh, mid and support get really hit by this change. Support's basically kind of gone with this change, or at least he can't bully the way that he did before. The only way that he could bully the way that he did before is if items get changed in Season 15 or something happens with AD carries and he synergizes well with them again. Rel, E bonus movement speed is decreased. E full tilt. Um, bonus movement speed is going down by 4%. Uh, 8% on maximum. Initial bonus movement speed is unchanged. Whatever. Rumble, Q damage decrease, E damage decrease, Flame Spitter. So Rumble is still going to be able to be picked. Even though he's losing this damage early on, um 60 to you know 60 to 160 to 55 to 155 um and and again um you know actually it didn't lose as much damage so the 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 pve change didn't go through originally they had this at 50 so now he's losing 10 damage if he lands both ease right um so he, he's losing 10 damage if he loses uh both ease and then here um 100 uh so he's losing 10 percent ap and uh, once he gets the points in Q, so like at rank three, nothing really happening. What they're doing is it's making it so that you can trade against Rumble the first like four levels a lot easier. That's what's happening where Rumble is like really oppressive. Um, and again, Rumble has really good counter picks like Warwick, which just never go picked and like Fiddlesticks um, also can be picked against Rumble. Um, and obviously there's some like lesser traditional, you know, alongside them, other champions that can be picked against Rumble up in top lane, but lane swap meta still does also have to be remembered. So Samira <clears throat> getting a flat 10% total AD to her Q is actually quite big um, for early laning phase like poke and all ins because that's what she's all about. Shen. So this is crazy because Viego and Zin and all these other champions, Vi, they might end up coming back for Worlds. Shen Jungle in competitive is is a monster pick. I mean, he, he just absolutely is an absolute, he's, he's such a broken pick. He can be flex support and top lane. Passive key barrier, 47 to 101, 12% bonus AP to 47 to 120, uh, and plus 13% bonus HP. And again, the thing is that Shen builds HP and resists, and he builds all of the uh, percent increase HP and shield items. So he builds Redemption, Solari, Moonstone, uh, you know, etc. cetera. Um, which means that he's getting even more value from this. So Shen is getting a lot of extra EHP from this buff. Smolder, uh, health is going to go down by a flat 30. Super Scorcher Breath, 20 to 60, 100% uh, AD, 15% AP to 15 to 55, so losing a flat 5 on it. Uh, w, a Chew, Glob Damage also going down by a flat 5. Minion Monster Damage uh, is going to also be modified on W. Um, Smolder is still going to be picked. He's just one of those champions that, again, much like Jinx, when in 2022, I think, Jinx lost 30 uh, AD and everyone said that she's dead and she can't be played anymore. You're idiots, okay? If you can't play around one extra auto attack, no one in the world is good enough to consistently play around one extra auto attack. Smolder is not gone because he's missing 30 HP. Now, some matchups do get really hard, but the thing is, is that you are picking Smolder with the intention to go even in lane and not be a bully, and you were just trying to mitigate things. The other really cool thing is if you're doing like the grass smolder and whatnot, there might've been games where you just got an extra five auto attacks with grass proc that you didn't versus another player. And that HP is actually now just there for you and all this other type of stuff. And to contextualize these types of things and understand what it means in a professional environment, if you are picking smolder to scale, hit the 225 stacks and warp the game around him, he's still smolder. Varus, Q and E damage decrease, Q piercing arrow, 90 to 370. Uh, 150 to 190 percent bonus AD to 90 to 370, 130 to 170 percent bonus AD. So he's losing 20 percent total bonus AD, uh, which means that he's losing like 40 damage on his maximum damage Q. Um, which that is that is something, yeah. Halo Blade 60 to 220, 110 percent, 260 to 220, 100 uh, percent bonus AD. Uh, so yeah, okay, that that's I mean, yeah, okay, his whole combo is losing like 60, it's pretty big. Vi Q damage is decreased. Uh, they're undoing a previous uh, buff that they gave her. Viego, uh, base AD increase, Q damage to mo uh, monsters decrease. So it's just basically changed because of the way that his base AD works. Um, overall, it's a good buff for Viego, especially because of his, you know, his, his passive and everything. Zinjao, armor growth increase, Q damage is increased, uh, 4.7 to 5.0. Q talon strike is also going up. Um, so again, 
Shen, Skarner in the jungle. If Xin Zhao and Viego end up popping up, also Nocturne, I guess, uh, as a means to answer these two. The other thing about Xin Zhao is Xin Zhao should be in theory also like a god tier jungler um, if people in the lane swap meta remember that John Atop is a thing. Um, and if they don't remember that John Atop's a thing, then, well, I mean, I guess, <clears throat> you know. Passive damage decrease, passive living battery damage, 90 to 200 based on level 1 to 15% targets maximum health, progression followed stat growth, 75 to 160. Uh, Zeri is really hit hard. Uh, she's not going to be mid probably anymore, and she's only going to be able to be picked in certain spots, but why would you pick her now when you can just pick Jinx? Passive short fuse, increased damage to structures, 150 to 75%. So he's losing half, uh, he's losing 75%, uh, does not matter. Um, Ziggs is picked for many other reasons than this. Um, so that, that doesn't matter. It just hurts, like, lane swap Ziggs a little bit. Bloodthirster, Icarus Shield, uh, 50 to 400 to 194 to 400, levels 8 to 15 to 165 to 315. So it's losing 75, uh, or sorry, it's losing 85 off of it at max rank. Life steal down by 3%. Um, hurts MF, doesn't really hurt anyone else. Um, even in the later stages of the game, it is a slight nerf to Bloodthirster, but whatever. Immortal Shield Bow, Shield Shrank 320 to 720 based on level, uh, to 400 to 700 based on level, so you get more up front, but then later on, um, you lose a little bit. Um, okay, and then Range Champions actually get a really big nerf to it. Ludin's, uh, Companion is gonna go down by 50 gold, up by 5 AP, loses the ability haste. Honestly, I think in more cases than not, this actually might be a nerf. Shadow Flame, ability power 120 to 115, magic penetration 12 to 15, max health threshold 35 to 40%, pet dot damage 32 to 25. So do not overreact to this. Remember, a couple of patches ago, Sork Pen Boots lost 3 M Pen. They're giving it back into Shadow Flame, taking 5 AP off, and then max damage to the troll run up by 5%. It is a nice buff, it is a nice change, but let's not overreact. Storm Surge. Now, this item, I think, is going to end up making a comeback on certain champions. Uh, Magic Penetration is going to go from 10 to 15. Huge. Passive Movement Speed is going to go from 8 to 5%. Storm Raider Health Threshold, 35 to 25%, which is really big. Squall Range Penalty, 10% removed. So, now there's going to be some champions that can build this and do a really interesting Magic Pen build. Like Syndra, very easy for her to proc this. Very easy for her to nuke you. Even Orianna with an M-Pen build, right? Uh, Malzahar, if he just goes pure M-Pen, like Malignance type variation and just tries to one-shot you um, instead of playing like the controly Leandri Blackfire Torch style, he might now just be able to go Malignance, play for R, so you have Malignance, you have Storm Surge, you have Shadow Flame, and you have Sorkpen Boots. Whoever you are just dies. That That is what just happens. You become an Arbot and you play like that. Um, and I think that's interesting. Fleet Footwork. Yone and Yasuo are going to be unstoppable, by the way, at, at Worlds. This is, just makes no sense, by the way. Healing uh, is going to go 10 to 130 based on level, plus 10% bonus AD, 5% AP. Healing is 60% effective for range users. Minion healing, uh, 20 to 10 melee range to 15% for all. Bonus movement speed, 15 for one second to 20 uh, to 15 for one second. Uh, really big changes also for Shivana jungle, but yeah, Yasuo Yone, really huge. Fortification damage reduction is going to go up by 10%. Turret plating and bulwark uh, is also going up, and that is it for the world patch. New player experience stuff is coming on, bugs and chromas and all that other good jazz, but... In terms of a competitive patch, Yasuo Yone, really big winners. Shen jungle... I have hope, okay, from Western teams. Ivern, still the god of the jungle, especially now with Lilia getting hit. Um, with Lilia getting tagged like this, honestly, mm, now nah, she's still probably Z. So that's going on. Varus does get tagged. He might actually be dropped to A in the tier list, but remember, guys, later this week, I'm doing the final mid list. All the other lists exist on Twitter. The final mid list will be done with APA. And then we'll make the final video for the 1418 annual world's tier list patch. Smolder is going to be totally fine. Viego change, very nice. And Zhao, if people remember that, like, John is a thing, that's going to be really big. Jinx is an insane champion. And I guess they want Jinx at Worlds because of Arcane, true. Um, and also, Arcane is on the horizon. And there are there's going to be a very big surprise in Arcane. Um, as well as the new champion, which we already sort of know about, right? Um, so that, 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 that's very good and very cool. And that is it. Uh, now we will take a look at the skins. Uh, honestly, this looks way too much like Singed, even though it's Thresh. This just kind of doesn't look like it goes together. Um, but it's sort of whatever. Renata back here, uh, it looks like Kog'Maw is trying to give Draven... What, the, what is going on over here, man? What is actually going on? We got CEO Mundo, and then who the hell is this? Who the hell is this? Oh my lord. 
Then we got we got Azir over here. And then, what, is there any other Easter eggs? Now, do you notice this map? Maybe this map has something to do with the MMO. Bet no one ever thought, you know, no one ever thought about stuff like this. Maybe the map has something to do with MMO. Also, I wonder if Rainbolt could find where this is on Runeterra. You know, from the image of the window. Um, Azir obviously arguing his case in, in court. Um, this guy just looks hideous. Uh... Looks like a Shadow Isles champion is in attendance. Uh, Mundo's in attendance. He's watching. Uh, just looking for any other Easter eggs. Just looking for any other Easter eggs. Doesn't look like there is any. And then, obviously, this skin is super cool. These skins, the splash arts are always amazing. But then you have to wait to see how it turns out in-game because there's a chance this ends up looking like those rocks from World of Warcraft and Outland. And, you know, it just doesn't do it. So, that is it for the patch rundown and i hope that you guys enjoyed it and i will see you guys in the next one as well as the co-streams and stuff see you guys later